So what am I talking about when I talk about 90-10 fishing? Undoubtedly you've heard that it's only 10% of fishermen that catch 90% of the fish. Well let's take that a little bit further and let's talk about how it's 90% of fish that live in only 10% of the water. I'm going to use some examples today of exactly where you're going to find 90% of the fish so you know exactly where to fish every time. Let's look at this little stretch of beach here. It's fairly unremarkable. Look, there's a couple of weed patches, but there's not much going on. But as we go a little bit further north, you can see how there's a bit of a rock wall going on. What's happening here, as the tide comes in, it creates a bit of an eddy and pressure point up where those rocks are. Brings a lot of bait fish in, and therefore a lot of predators move in. And as the tide moves out, it, the pressure point occurs on the other side of this, this little rock protrusion. So there's always going to be bait fish hanging around, there's always going to be predators hanging around too. So that's a great spot to look at. Out of this whole stretch of beach, there's only about 10% of it that holds 90% of the fish. Look, fish choose to stay in certain parts of the estuary, as well as reefs and dams and river systems, for two main reasons, food and shelter. They'll also use certain parts of the reef or river system or estuary for spawning as well, but let's just concentrate on food and shelter for the time being. Look at this massive barra. It's saltwater barra move out to the river mouse around summertime to spawn and they grow really silver and they get these big yellow fins as you can see on this guy or here or this, this female here because this barra is about a metre long. It looks like she's just cruising through the shallows, minding her own business, just randomly picked a little bit of water. But as she gets spooked by the drone, you'll see she's pretty close to some mangroves and she moves into those mangroves and ducks into those mangrove roots to use them as shelter. She also uses those mangrove roots to ambush some prey as well. She's cruising along those flats because she's chasing mullet and whiting and stuff like that, but as soon as she feels a little bit insecure, she probably spotted the drone flying above her head. She ducks into those mangrove roots for a bit of shelter. Look, they provide everything. And that's what we've got to look for. We've got to look for areas that can combine food and shelter for the fish and we'll find 90% of our fish in those little 10 percenters. Oh yep, yep, there's one under it. Yep, there it is. Oh yeah, it's a cracker. It's a cracker. <laughs> oh, that's a good Yeah, yep, hang on. You can see him on top of the water there. He's got me in a snag. Yeah, you got him, you got him out, you got him out. If he's not hooked now, I'll just try and get him out. Oh, it looks like he's got two trebles that Boom. Oh, yeah. mate. It's a thumper. That's a thumper. It's so important to understand the fish that you're targeting so you'll know where to hunt for these different fish. If you look just here, I'm at a real shallow area of the Gold Coast Broadwater and I'm hunting for flathead. And I'm casting my lure right on the weed edge because I know that at low tide, that's where the flathead's going to be. And why is he going to be there? Well, he's going to look for shelter and he's also going to look for food. He's protected by that weed edge. He can duck in there if he needs to, or she needs to, depending on the size of the flathead. But there's so much bait fish there that they're just gonna pounce on it. So while flathead love clean water, and I go looking for clean water when I'm chasing flathead, if I find a bank this good, no matter what the clarity of the water is, there's always gonna be flathead here. Yep. Didn't take very long. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's a good fish too. Look, even man-made structure holds so much fish. We look at the Gold Coast for an example here. There's a bridge going over to an island. That bridge is gonna hold so much fish. Those pylons are gonna offer shelter as well as bait fish and a place for mangrove jack, mulloway, and even broom to ambush their prey from. So the bridge itself is a great structure, but as we fly the drone past the bridge, you can see on the other side, there's a marina. The marina's got pontoon, it's got floating boats, it's got pylons holding those pontoons into place. And think about all this stuff as upside down reefs, because the reefs hold barnacles and growth and stuff like that, usually on the bottom, but on the Gold Coast with the man-made structure, it's all up on top. 
but fish still love it. They love it as much as a normal reef. And they'll be they'll be swimming around there and they'll be hunting for different prey, but they'll also offer heaps of shelter for them as well. But just be careful because not all marinas are fishermen friendly. So be careful where you fish, but they do offer a lot of protection and a lot of bait as well. You can also see there's a bit of a channel running through here and that's a highway for fish to move in and out of this particular area with another weed edge and sandbar to the left hand side as well. So look, this is just an amazing fishing spot in itself. And it's such a big area, but it's gonna hold a massive amount of fish. So this is a perfect 10 percenter. It's got the weed edge, it's got the sandbar, it's got the floating pontoons, the floating boats, and it's even got the bridge. Look, man-made structure is something that's really important to us, the more suburbanized our fishing seems to get. Look, surf beaches are really different, but we're still looking for a particular pattern that's gonna hold 90% of the fish. And the 10%ers that hold 90% of the fish in the surf situation are little holes and gutters. And you can see here, I've marked out where the deep water is, and it's got access from the back of the surf where the big fish can come in and they've got plenty of water to swim back out again and all the bait is going to be held up in that deep water. So look, this is another great example of a 10 percenter. It's 10 percent of the beach holding 90 percent of the fish and that's what we really got to look for. And it's deep sea fishermen that know this rule better than anybody else. It's not even 10% of the ocean that holds 90% of the fish. It's a tiny little 1% or even less than 1%. It's the reefs that hold so much fish. And let's look at this island as a bit of an example. We look at the island and we can see that there's real shallow rock edge at, the, at its facing front. But on the very outside edge of it, there's deep water going past this, this reef. This is going to hold so many fish. And this is a low tide situation too. So when the tide's up and this reef's really under the water, it's gonna hold a lot more fish because they can get into those rocks and they can pick crabs out and bait fish out and, and really have a good feed. And I also wanna just quickly mention pressure points. I heard this term about 15 or 20 years ago and I didn't quite understand it, but then it all clicked once I started fishing in locations where the current gets pushed up against certain areas like reefs or even concrete walls in man-made structure or bridge pylons or even corners of rivers where all the baits pushed up and because of the current and it creates eddies and the water swells around in those locations and the bait is stuck there because it gets really disorientated and pressure points are a great place to fish. This reef that I'm looking at right now is a great example of it. All the water comes into this river mouth and the deep water at the edge of this reef creates a real pressure point. There's a lot of eddies that gets worked off this reef and there's so much bait fish. We get trevally and even tuna and mackerel, queenfish, all sorts of fish off this reef because it's a really good pressure point. Guys, that's how you gotta look at a river system. Don't just cruise along and think that, oh, this is a nice little spot here, I'll drop the anchor and I'll throw a bait out. It's creek mouths that run into river systems. You can see here I'm fishing a little dirty water line. The dirty water line is really important because it's not the dirty water that's the issue, it's two currents meeting each other and you might find that there's a slight temperature difference or even the colour of the water can create a, like a war for bait fish and predators will hunt along there. Look for anything that's different that might hold bait fish. And get to know your target species because they're all a little bit different. Flathead, mangrove jack, even barramundi love to ambush their fish. But some fish just swim around like tuna and mackerel and they really attack their fish and they don't hide anywhere. They're really chasing bait fish. And what turns them on? It's different current lines and bait fish moving around. So look, get to know your fish and get to know where they're more likely to be. Because remember, 90% of fish are always found in 10% of the water.